In this example, we're going to create and diagram a loanable funds model and show that as does the supply of loanable funds decreases and as the demand for loanable funds increases, the interest rate rises and how that affects overall gross private domestic investment, government purchases and investment, and finally, personal consumption. If we look at a supply-demand graph for the loanable funds model, we will see that they are very similar to the supply-demand graph of, of goods and services. Where these two intersect becomes the equilibrium point in terms of quantity of funds and the price of funds. But when we're talking about loans, the price of any loan is the interest that we pay or is charged on that loan. So as you can see, where the supply and demand of loanable funds intersects becomes the equilibrium interest rate. Now, when the market is expanding, or, and we're in an expansionary business cycle, firms are looking to invest. As they're looking to invest more to keep up with growing demand, the demand for loanable funds increases. The reason it increases is because more companies, both large and small, are going to the financial intermediaries and trying to arrange for financing to expand their businesses, either by buying new plant and equipment or by making investments in other type of capital infrastructure, such as computer systems. Now, the traditional form of finance for these payments is R or R loans. At the same time, as the market is going well, or as the economy is moving along and increasing, the stock market is usually increasing at a similar rate. Now, this goes back to when we talked about a few chapters ago, the wealth effect. As the value of people's assets rise, i.e., their stock portfolios and their homes, they feel wealthier. When they feel wealthier, they are going to spend more of their incomes. And you remember, income is a combination of the wages we earn, which is the largest portion, interest that we receive on any loan funds, real estate, or rent from real estate, and business profits. As that income is coming in, people will spend more of it and save less. As we learned in Chapter 6, that savings equals investments. Therefore, when people save more, more funds are available to be lent out. This will become more clear or clearer in Chapter 8 when we start talking about money and banking. But for instance, as people are spending more, the supply of loanable funds decreases. It crisscrosses. the new demand curve at a new point. And if we bring this down, we could see that the quantity of funds that are lent out, lent out may stay the same, but the interest rate for which they are lent increases. When interest goes up, costs to businesses go up. When costs go up, profits go down. When it becomes too expensive for businesses to produce, sorry about that, when it becomes too expensive for businesses to produce, they are going to start to slow down their output, thus slowing down supply, thus leading us in to a recessionary business cycle. So as you can see, growth goes hand in hand with investment, and investment is funded by savings. In times of economic recession, people tend to save more and spend less. When that happens, the supply of loanable funds starts to increase again. It'll start to increase, moving back from towards its original, and maybe even past its original, 
creating a new supply curve. The same thing would happen with the demand for loanable funds. As the interest rate goes up, demand would start shifting downwards. What happens is it creates a new demand curve. It creates a new equilibrium interest rate at a much lower level. When interest rates are lower, hurdle rates for company investment are lower. Thus, more projects seem attractive and companies will invest and undertake in more projects. And as you remember, through circular flow, that when businesses invest more in factors of production, they will make more products. When they make more products, they will sell more to households, who will then supply the labor through the businesses in the factors market to make more products. Thus, when people have more money in their hands, they will buy more, sparing more production. So, as you can see, we've kind of wrapped together multiple theories that we discussed in chapters 2, chapters 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, and now chapter 6. And we can start seeing now how all of these individual theories start coming together to produce macroeconomic growth or macroeconomic contraction.